And we can plug in that value now to our square root of gr. So 9.28 meters per second squared. And notice that I turned this into meters because we have meters here. And so um, <clears throat> we will have inside the equation meters squared over sec oh, seconds squared. When you take the square root of that, you'll get meters per second, get the correct units. And we get a number of 7,799 meters per second. What if you don't want to be in a circular orbit or you want to know the general uh, theory? Uh, well, we'll look now at orbital velocity for conic orbits. So in general, we could have elliptical orbits, parabolic orbits, or hyperbolic orbits. And so here I've shown uh, a sketch of the Earth with uh, <clears throat> a spacecraft located at this position from the center of the Earth uh, to uh, the location of the spacecraft in space, and that's r, r sub p. That's called the radius at perigee. So that's some distance. That's basically the, the, the radius of the Earth plus the altitude we want to be at. And then we have vp, which is the velocity at perigee. And that's how fast you need to go for these different orbits. <coughs> For this elliptic orbit that I have here, we notice that the ellipse, by definition, this is two times the semi-major axis, the distance from the perigee to the, the apogee. And to calculate the velocity you need to be in that orbit, you need the square root of 2 mu over rp minus mu over a. So this is the formula. The a that you plug in is half the distance uh, of this. In other words, it's rp plus ra. So the ra divided by 2. So that tells us what this guy is. And RP is, of course, the RP that we started at. Mu is the gravitational parameter. It's spelled MU. By the way, you can look these up in an English dictionary. All the Greek letters have a spelling. So, And it looks like a U, but make sure you have this front so the front tail is nice and long so people can tell uh, that you're talking about mu and not u. <clears throat> As I mentioned, a is rp plus ra over 2. Mu is the gravitational parameter. It's g times m. That means Newton's universal gravitational constant g times the mass of the Earth. These two numbers always appear together, and in fact, we really don't know exactly the mass of the Earth. But we know the value of g times m to a much greater level of accuracy. And so it's pretty standard in orbital mechanics to just use the mu by itself. And it's, we call it the gravitational parameter. And there's a value for, for all the planets, the sun, and the moons in the solar system. For the Earth, mu, which is this product gm, is 3.986 times 10 to the fifth kilometers cubed per second squared. Some odd-sounding units, but we'll see why we have those units when we do calculations. <clears throat> For a circular orbit, the RA and the RP are the same distance. So we just put them equal, so that A equals R. And so if we go back to our original equation 3, if the A equals R, in fact equals RP, we have 2 mu over RP minus 1 mu over RP, so we just have a single mu over RP in that case. And so that gives us uh, this equation. This is for the circular speed, or circular velocity. And we put in the value of 6,554 kilometers, uh, and put in the mu value I just gave, 
and divide. And notice that we have, everything has to be in kilometers here. Kilometers downstairs, kilometers cubed upstairs. So we cancel one of them to get kilometers squared per second squared. When we take square root, we get kilometers per second. And lo and behold, we get 7,799 meters per second or 7.799 kilometers per second. It's the same result that we got from the uh, Newton's cannonball thought experiment. Same value. <clears throat> now let's look at a summary of these conic orbits. We've shown that for a circular orbit, we need a velocity of square root of mu over rp, which is called the circular speed, or circular velocity. For elliptic orbit, we need the square root of 2 mu over rp minus mu over a. There's no particular name for this. Notice that if a becomes rp, we get the circular speed again. If a becomes a very large number, if a goes off to infinity, we end up with the square root of 2 mu over rp, which is the equation we have here in equation 10. So if a goes to infinity, that is, if you want to escape the Earth, you need square root of 2 mu square root of the quantity 2 mu over rp. This is called the escape speed. Or escape velocity. In some cases, you will need hyperbolic, a hyperbolic orbit. Uh, so notice we have a new uh, term in here, uh, v infinity squared, which you could think of this as being zero for the parabolic orbit, and you get this equation. But sometimes you need an even bigger number inside the square root. So what's this v infinity all about? Well, let's look at our earlier picture. <clears throat> 